We are now recording. Okay, so started discussion. Um, so we, we talked about at least two drafts. Actually, potentially three, right? For the base protocol, it was the scheme and the protocol and then the use cases. Um, I'm totally fine for the editor slash authors to work on those documents wherever you see fit. Once they are adopted, um, we should be using the GitHub, which I will set up and I didn't set anything up because there isn't anything that's been adopted yet. Um, but if you're interested in seeing that structure, I can go ahead and set that up in the next week or two. As far as the work on uh, the, the schema and the protocol docs, um, like, so I know from the, the IETF 113 meeting we had, we, uh, I, I believe, ended up with myself and uh, Janelle Allen as the editors. Um, right. I think we, we can set it up somewhere independent. Um, if we can also wait for you to, um, to, to get the, like, the main GitHub thing set up and put it there. Which it, I, I know we have sort of the question of, uh, or that problem of like proposed versus adopted, but right. given that it's in the charter and we know that we're going to be considering this at some point, I, I'll, right. I'll do, we'll do whatever you say. Okay, so to to follow process, my suggestion is go ahead and start something, and so the IETF process is you bring so Danny just like you had brought a draft which you know isn't complete, mm -hmm. but at least it shows direction. Then um, what the chair does is to ask if we have enough people that have reviewed it. Um, so typically the questions is, have we had people that reviewed it? Does the working group believe it is in our charter, which for these three that I listed, they are. Um, is there is interest? If there is interest, we already have authors and editors. If there is interest, then we need to have enough people be willing to review and help provide the feedback to the authors. And especially for the protocols and schemas, we'd like to see if there's interest in actually implementing as well. So those are the questions that get asked before we actually adopt the document. Um, for this group, we've agreed, at least on these three documents, I still need to follow the process. So I'm presuming that that will just be a check mark, if you will, right? Um, that the adoption for these three should go much faster. So the three documents was schema, protocol, and use cases. Perfect, and I think we have to, like for use cases, we know that there's a document pending, but we actually need to create a, a physical document Right? Yes. Even if it's even if it's early and then get it adopted, right? Correct. It needs to be using the IETF template and um, guidance, right? So for anyone who's not in the Slack channel, I will put the link, the invitation link into the Slack channel, if that's okay. Uh, we can also put it into the notes. Unless you object, Nancy. No, you can put it into the notes. Perfect. Um, and the Slack thing, channel. Yep. The one thing we have um, we have right now is a set of channels that roughly align to the different types of types of docs that were we believe the working group wants to produce. So for anyone who hasn't gotten in there yet, that's you know at least the starting paradigm that we're thinking will work. We've also got a, a channel in there for um, for folks who are new to Skim. So that they can ask questions. So that might be something else that folks want to subscribe to. Okay. Do, do we want to, sorry, I, I'm not sure if I jumped the gun on talking about Slack. Do we want to just actually make that a topic and, and have the whole group weigh in on how we should yes. make it work? So, as I said, I, I, Came unprepared. I don't quite have the agenda. Um, so we'll just go through topics. Okay. 
Okay, so are we okay to do Slack now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, all right. So I am putting the invitation link in here. You I beat you to it, uh, Pam. Oh, you did. Okay. Good Sorry. Great. No, no, you don't have to apologize. Um, I think I think I actually already covered most of what we're thinking to do. Uh, I think the most important thing to note here, um, it was also noted in the mailing list, is that it cannot be used for formal decision making, right? Because what the one thing we cannot do with the skim chat is retain notes. Like it's got a certain um, a certain data retention policy. And we would have to pay to have a, a longer one. And so everyone should be treating this as conversations that can legitimately go away after a certain period of time. And anything you want to be on the record needs to go to mailing list. Um, Nancy, is there anything else I need to add in that area? No, you've covered it well. Yes. And so, so yeah, the, the goal would be to try to get a channel per effort so that anyone can dip into the channel and see what the discussions are and so that people can opt in to any document effort that we've got. Um, and then, you know, what we're hoping with this channel, you know, is that it might even survive the working group. You know, we talked about maybe it, what it could end up being is sort of a community around implementation of skim as well. Uh, but that's, of course, a long term. Outcome that we'll have to see if it actually works. Um, but it is free, so we're using the free instance. Nobody's paying for it. It's not sponsored by anyone. If anyone wants to co-own the channel, I, I think I've assigned a few people as co-owners for resilience reasons. So if anyone else is keen to, to get in there, please let me know. Um, Nancy, I, maybe it makes sense to make you an owner, or would you explicitly rather not um, do you need plausible deniability <laughs> <laughs> um well it, yeah it might be better if if i don't i mean i'm i'm fine either way um my bandwidth is rather limited um but i can help and jump in if needed okay perfect um i have changed i've created a channel i put it in the chat but i've created a channel called meeting notes so the theory here would be that um, we don't have a really heavy process um, at the end of this meeting, right? We should just be able to post um, if we choose back to the mailing list and with the same link. But those of us who are in skim in Slack can always just refer to that meetings note, you know, meeting notes channel to to get to our last pieces. And the reason why I think this is important is because um, hedge, you know, the the all of those HackMD related things. There's not really a good organizational system, right? You have to know the link to find the doc, at least in my experience. So if anyone has suggestions about that, I'll that say is that correct. That. Is there anything else we need to cover on the Slack piece? Let's see, you've got the channels um, and you made the clarification. I think that's it unless somebody else has other questions. Um, does anyone think we need to be more explicit about which docs we're editing and which channels? I, th I think we can let that evolve. But right now, I mean, the ones, basically the channels then should correspond to what Nancy listed as the drafts in progress, right? I think they mostly do. Um, there are a couple though, like synchronization, for example, is not yet, I think on your radar, Nancy, even though we have milestones set for later, I right. think that one's going to be a very active channel. So I, I assume that's okay. That's totally okay. I mean, we've got groups that meet almost on a daily basis, especially as they're putting proposals together. Um, and some will even meet weekly to do interop um, implementation and interop testing. And so I don't need to be as the chair we don't need to be involved in all of that. Um, it's when there's changes and updates, right, and procedural things um, is when I can come in as chair to help. So my role is basically to, to help 
ensure that the group is progressing and that um, we are adhering to the charter, the scope. Um, and that's not to say that if there's more work to be done that is not in scope for the charter, um, it doesn't mean that we, well, we may not be able to approach those topics at hand um, at the moment, but it gets to the discussion of do we need to update right, the charter to address that. Um, but coming back to the lines of communication, hopefully I've clarified that. And then I, I think that the next one down on the, on at least what, what I had proposed um, the, was the GitHub repository piece. Um, so there's this little gap of where we store the documents before they get adopted by the working group. That's correct. So, so we do have the GitHub repository that's from the interest group. I mean, it, it may be, um, is Danny on the call? Danny's, uh, is Danny Zollner, I mean, yes. Yes, he is. Danny, um, yes. yeah, you've already got your proposal, for example, hosted in a place of your choosing. Uh, I like a random, so the, my proposed drafts, uh, I've submitted through the IETF, so they're hosted there. Uh, I can, I'm glad to put up like the, the markdown files or whatever somewhere else as well. Okay. I mean, I, I think what we want to do is just supply a place where people who don't have a place to put a document they're working on can, yeah. can put it, right? I don't think we have to be any more right. descriptive than that, right? So, correct. So, Pam, the, the other question that I have been pondering on is um, I could create <clears throat> in the ITF skim organization, I could create a... Um, a directory there, for lack of a better term, that is for, you know, we can be distinct and having one repository. I mean, part of me says we should just use the skim interest group. The other part of me says we can, if you want, we can put it under the ITF skim um, and there'd be here the, the documents that are, um, not adopted and here are the ones that are officially being worked on but i don't know if that might get confusing because once they get adopted then they need to move from one location to another and our next opportunity to adopt documents is what the next we, binary, right? we can start discussing them in our next session which will be four weeks from now in january right um, so we can start as early as that, um, if, if there are documents, and again, we start the process of doing the call for adoption sometime in January. Um, usually I do a, a two week. So again, the process is having enough people reviewed it. Are the reviews positive? and especially for those three, there better be interest. Um, and then if those all are, you know, if there's interest and if we've had, usually I look for three to five people at least that are not authors to have reviewed the documents um, and provide positive, yes, this is in the right direction. Then we do the call for adoption. Usually I do typically the process in the ITF and I, I do, is about a two week call for adoption. And once they're adopted, then they go into the, the GitHub repo. Okay, so it sounds to me like the authors in a given channel can just figure it out. And that, you know, if, if it's a concern, there's literally a four week window where we could, in theory, be editing Word docs or Google docs or something like that. Um, and then we could quite quickly get this stuff into an official repository if we felt it was at the right time. Sounds about right. Yep. Okay, so the last one that was on my list was actually setting up editors meetings for these various pieces. We can obviously do that on the Slack channel, but we've got lots of people here. Um, the, the one option we have is to use this same time slot for the other three weeks of the month. Um, 
in that, you know, like for me, it's nice to know that this is always a skim hour of the week, if you will. Um, does anyone have strong preferences there? Like conflict is fast fed meets in this time slot. You know, I'm actually, um, I had asked if we could, so Tim, Tim, my coworker is in that meeting now, and, and he's going to ask if it's possible to reschedule that meeting. I don't know if that makes it better, but I am, but definitely it's a conflict for me too. Yeah, I don't hear anyone like super excited about setting up regimented additional meetings. Um, should I be yeah. deleting all of the other skim interest group meetings? Because those are already on people's calendars and may be useful. It really depends on the group, Pam. I guess you're asking that. I had presumed that that those meetings were not happening anymore, but you're right. right. I mean, since they're there. Yep. Especially for the editors. I leave it up to them. Uh, I, I think there's value in having some variation in the time slot, uh, just for accessibility from people who'd want to contribute uh, in different parts of the world, so that they're not always put on the like the the, the bad side of the, you know the timing. That's a fair point. And if these interims get to be too difficult, um, I can try and figure out how to alternate them. <laughs> Actually, I could probably do that. It's just, you know, we do the 8 a.m. Pacific every eight weeks. And what was the other time, Pam? I think it was 3 p.m. Pacific. I believe so, yes. Every other yeah. two weeks. Every other, the alternating eight weeks. Yeah. Okay, I think I think given nobody has real strong feelings about it, we should cancel it and get it off of people's calendars. And then, you know, those sub communities can do the work. Yep. You know, it doesn't make sense in some ways for us to have massive consensus on something that then a small group is going to have to deliver on. Anyway. Yeah, it it would be helpful though, Pam, um, if you wanted well to accelerate things is. Especially for those authors who are putting the draft. So, usually, once the draft gets submitted, um, and if they're tagged um, as being relevant to skim, so it's like draft dash, put somebody's last name dash, you know, skim dash, then the title, um, then those get flagged into our working group. Um, and the skim working group will get the notification. And so, um, for those that are paying attention to the skim mail list, then it prompts them hopefully to review, but it wouldn't hurt for the authors to also post to the skim working group to solicit comment and feedback. Okay, so I, I consider adding that to the uh, Slack uh, uh, channel. Well, the notification. That's, yeah. That's a good idea. So here, so here's the question. Are we good with logistics now? Do we have everything we need? I mean, that the, you know, have necessarily the logistics have been taking up a big part of our calls. I think now we should be able to run fast, right? And really start looking at, you know, targeting our work documents in these meetings and um, making progress on them. Yep. I think so. And um, given that the holidays are upon us and four weeks will put us to the first week of january i may just pose the question to see if we have so for this session for these virtual sessions it's really for us to talk about the progress of the content of 
at least these three drafts and if anybody else has new proposals that are coming up. Um, and January, maybe since again, given the holidays, we may not have that much to report. I may even ask whether we need to just cancel it. Or you guys can use the time to meet and discuss actual content of, um, of these drafts. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So there was a question in the chat, right? Which, um, and I can't tell whether that was, um, whether you already addressed that Nancy, which was which documents have been adopted and which haven't. I know you listed three in the notes. I just want to make sure that one gets. Yeah, and, and I mentioned we have not adopted any documents yet. So, you know, I don't see Phil on the call. The other one, the, the only one that I saw that might have a chance is Phil's, uh, was it paging? Phil? Oh, value valued paging. Yeah. Um, but Phil's not here for me to ask him if that was one that, you know, and again, we can solicit feedback on that draft so that we can um, put the call for adoption. But so, 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 oh, go ahead. Somebody had. Yeah, a Sorry, I'm I'm a bit ignorant on on what it means to to have a document adopted, and I assume that those are internet drafts that are adopted by the working group to be turned into RFCs. Is correct. that the right assumption? That is correct. Okay. So right. you may notice a lot of ITF drafts, right? Um, and so the hint is if you see draft dash and then a working group, pretty much those have been adopted by that working group as a document that they are intending to publish as an RFC. So we currently don't have any in SKIM yet. Um, and so we actually, in order to have them adopted, they actually have to follow the ITF norm, meaning use the ITF template um, and have enough content in there for the working group to um, to say, yes, this is one we wanna work on, we wanna implement if it's a standards-based one, um, review and Im interest and implement to get adoption and then publication. Okay. So the three documents that you mentioned, which I think were, was it schema or, or like protocol schema and use cases? Yeah. Those still need to be written. Correct. Okay. So we had quite a bit of discussion at the IETF 112 on those three with, you know, a, a sort of path that we wanted to take for these three. And the next step was that we, we did assign editors and authors, I believe, for the three. Um, and so now the expectation is for us to actually see those documents that we can review and adopt. Okay, that's helpful. I think that the, the kind of big topics that we've created Slack channels for, as Pam mentioned, um, could, could be addressed by those three documents, but the topics themselves um, are still just in the early stages of discussion. Um, at least that's the opinion that, that I've gathered, is that we need more participation on the Slack uh, channels on those topics, because um, there's just, I don't even think there's been any proposals on the Slack channels, um, just a few preliminary discussions. So I guess, my ask would be that people please go and try and participate on the Slack channels, and then we can maybe transfer some of those consensus to the mailing list when we have them. 
That's great. Yep. So I know this may sound like a burden, but um, the skim mail list is also there to have those discussions. But I like having the Slack channels for that ephemeral set of discussions for these particular documents, right? Um, anything substantive, my recommendation would be to bring it back to the mail list. That way you get broader coverage. Meaning there may be people that may not be listening to all of the skim channels. They may just be listening to one or two. Um, but if there's a third where they come up with a really big meaty issue, um, you may want to bring it back. That's my recommendation to the mail list. That way you get all of the participants um, made aware. So hopefully that, I think we are pretty well set with structure and process moving forward, um, unless you guys think otherwise. But for me as the chair at this point, I leave it to the document editors and authors to help progress those documents to a draft form that the broader group can review and adopt. Yeah, I do have one more question, and that is, I'm assuming that anyone can be an editor of any doc. How do they notify you that they're edited? Like, I mean, do we just self-nominate? Yeah, okay. you self-nominate. And um, the ITF prefers not to have more than, you know, a handful, typically, three or four uh, names on the document. But if we have very strong participation of a large group, what I've seen is that the group anoints one or two editors that get promoted as authors of the draft, but then you put a, um, a section towards the end of the document that, and now you have two options, you do an acknowledgement um, and or you create another section that says contributing authors. And that's all, you know, again, ITF process and preference. And I will say anything more than four or five authors on the list gets really hard to format. That's like limitation by complication. Well, that's the 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 um, the logistical one. The procedural one to me gets to the question of how much substance do each of the authors really provide, right? So if you're going to have more than you know, say, more than five seven authors. I might question, well, did each and every one provide equal amounts of content to the draft? Okay, so I feel like this we've we're at the point now where we can run, right? Like it's, I don't think there's any other limitation. We have a work group, we can get our docs adopted as soon as four weeks from now. We know where we need to go to organize per doc, right? There's no gatekeeping on authorship. Nope. No gatekeeping. And uh, once you have the documents ready, do submit them to the ITF um, and let the skim working group know. And that can happen anytime. Anytime. The only window in which you get blocked, you know, and and again, it used to be a logistical one because they actually had to take the links down for the servers so that 
the live conferences could take place. And so usually they freeze the documents for, I think about a week, week or 10 days where you cannot submit documents and they've still been doing that for the virtual sessions. Um, but that's the only time, right? Other than that, you can, and you are free to submit any of the documents as well as revise the documents at your own time. Okay, does, does anyone have technical stuff they wanna cover? Okay, if, if we're done with logistics and I'm super excited, like we're set up to go now. Um, is there any progress we can make today in the last 18 minutes? Does anyone wanna propose something, start a conversation? Only just to repeat that, I think that there are good discussions that we can have in the Slack channel. They're already starting, so please go and voice an opinion or bring up a topic. Um, but that's what I was would love to see. Okay, so I subscribe to. I only see one channel right now. I think if you go in and hit the plus button next to channels, you'll see more. So the, the ones that I see, I see um, concepts and use cases, which is really that RFC 7642, I think. Uh, there's there's a meeting notes channel, a new to skim channel, a privileged access channel. So let's just take a screenshot. These are at least the ones that I I see. I, I don't know, will WebEx let me paste a, an image? Um, no, you have to share your screen. Will Will Hedgedoc let me paste an image? I bet it does. It does. Yeah, okay, we'll do it in Hedgedoc. Okay, that's a bad idea. I have to sign in to do that. So let me just share my screen. <laughs> yeah, don't, super quick. don't do that. Oh, I see. I see. My problem I is, is I I have three three different cell channels. So I have three different Slack forms that I'm in. Oh, I see them. I see them. I see them. Yeah. So, so just for anyone who's not super Slack familiar, right? Um, you can subscribe to any of these channels. You can enter them and leave them at will. And, uh, you know, we want these to roughly correspond to, to document work so that we can collaborate there. There's also a water cooler channel in case we want to tell skim jokes, for example. Um, and the nice thing about the water cooler channel is people can choose to, you know, exit if they're too focused and they don't want the extra cruft. Um, and then the new to skim is, is hopefully a place that people can join and ask what they might consider to be silly questions or new, you know, um, newbie questions. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I, for some reason, I added a PII uh, channel and I don't see that showing up on your list. Oh, let's see. Uh, I see it. That's here. I, for, I'm surprised it didn't show up on my on my list, so I can. Yeah, that's the only interesting. interesting that's the only one that that didn't show up on my list. It's so, in the screenshot that's in the um, the notes. If that helps. Right. Oh, good. Yeah. Good show. Yeah. Okay, and that's as far as we've gotten. I I feel like we can do a lot of work to pin resources, right? To make them very easy for people to get to. Um, we can also pin resources on how to post a draft. You know, how to um, to IETF. All of that stuff. So that can, I think, is work we can do just to make our daily lives super fast so we don't have to search for stuff as well. You are well organized, Pam. <laughs> you have no idea how wrong you are. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> Already. I'm not hearing any any uh, anybody willing to start up a technical topic. Maybe um, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, give a stupid question. So what what I understood is that um, the main RFCs of Skim are going to be revised, and that uh, these are the three documents that. Uh, that this working group already has taken up. In the Slack channel, I also see, uh, for instance, privileged uh, access and per, uh, PII. 
So um, we are going to discuss on these drafts, uh, uh, which I also find very interesting, but there has not been a decision to take up that as working item. Is this understanding sort of correct? That is correct. Well, the, the privilege access stuff really falls under the schema draft. So at least that's the current thinking. So of the three documents, that's where that one is most likely to show up. Though so we'll see. <laughs> depends on what we cook. Depends on what we cook up. Yeah, I, I was going to say, you know, some of these channels may not map directly to a particular draft. They may just be general topics that get folded into a draft. And the reverse could also be true that um, if we find, so for instance, I mentioned um, Phil submitting a separate draft on paging. And so if there are areas that may be broader or may bloat, I will say, and I didn't mean that to sound as a negative criticism, but if it's something that could stand alone um, and be crisper as a separate document, right, um, that can also happen, which is the case with the, the paging draft. Um, we do have the charter and the scope listed in the ITF, if you look at the skim working group about and so, if there are any other proposals and ideas that may also fall in the charter, they can be presented. And so, this is all to say, we're not limited to just these three drafts, mm -hmm. but these are the three that were the core <laughs> that drove us to charter, right? Cheers. Anything else? Going once, going twice. All right. Well, I wish everyone happy holidays. And uh, we'll be chatting both over Slack and, and Skim mail list. And thank you, Pam, again for setting up the Slack and, and for those that help with the note takers, Paul. Yep, this is going to be fun. I'm excited. All right. Hey, right. have a good holiday, everyone. Cheers. Yeah. Happy so holidays. Cheers. Happy holidays. Bye bye. Bye. Happy holidays. Bye -bye.